Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. Aim for the bushes. Uh, I'm Brendan, here with Luke. My son is bisexual. And Jonathan. That's me. Oh, Tremendous. should we all do quotes now? <laughs> if you got one, just rattle it off real quick. Uh, well, I think if I was going to choose a quote, I should start at the end and then jump back to the beginning and then jump through. All right, we're beginning. not doing this whole quote. We're talking about the other guys this week. We cannot sustain this. Just, I'm not going to just quote this movie this whole episode. <laughs> I could. I couldn't. I would die inside and outside. And it's I not. It's very quotable. People love to quote it, but that's a different thing. Uh, yeah, we're talking with the other guys. It's Luke's pick. Let's sh- short and sweet go around. Luke, what do you think of this movie? As always, I enjoy this movie. I, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's something about it. I just love the way it flows. Certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah. I love the dialogue. I feel like we're going to have a discussion. Jonathan, what do you I think of this movie? I thought that there were uh, some funny things, but overall, I, I didn't like super enjoy it. I didn't hate it, but I really didn't enjoy it. Hey guys, this movie sucks shit. Wow, that's such a... I <laughs> never would have thought you would say that. Hmm. Hey guys, this this movie is like a sloppy fart in a crowded elevator. I disagree. This movie is a... This movie is like comedy. wearing wet top socks tier? inside your shoes. Okay, hold we'll on. Say top tier. It's not a top tier. This movie is like getting a candy from a great uncle and not knowing whether the candy is older than you but you have to accept it anyway listen here's the thing so this movie's like buying new clothing thinking you look good walking outside and a bird shits on you immediately again i don't see any actual critique well here's the critique now that i've listed way too many examples and really just beaten the dead horse of my point now you actually know what it's like to watch this movie where every single joke is rammed into the ground and just thoroughly abused but that's what i love it's so bad like callbacks in comedy movies are not a problem this movie goes one or too far with literally every single joke i think it's great because it ends up having some continuity where it otherwise wouldn't and the biggest problem i have with this movie holy shit it's so sexist and homophobic like every the joke in the movie. movie is that uh terry is a fucking um what's his face he's a fucking like his whole character is that of toxic masculinity yes but that's, that's like the that's point. every character in the movie is that his life basically sucks but, because he's put like every you know, character I mean, it's definitely not every character no no here okay will ferrell's character I don't even remember his name because who cares? Will Ferrell in this movie should be easily redeemable. He is outside of the toxic masculinity. He is abused by his co-workers and his partner. And even he's a piece of shit to his wife. The whole movie. Fucking the narrator of this movie makes a homophobic comment. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely true. It's insane. The uh, honestly, the only character which I like going this movie cold, I wouldn't have expected. The only character who doesn't make any shitty remarks, at least as I recall, is fucking Captain Michael Keaton. And he's the shit. He's he's the best character in the movie. He's fucking hilarious, and he's straight man's like he's, almost the yes, entire thing. He's the only part of this movie that is worth it to me. He's he's great in this. Like he's even, fucking great. Like, His quotes for fucking. Uh, TLC. Yeah, that was, that's again. That's the only, and maybe it's just because I like Michael Keaton. This movie is the only joke that I felt wasn't just thoroughly beaten in this movie and just killed. I I I, in, I liked that joke. It's but, not even funny anymore. But like he brings up his son being bisexual, and I was like, oh fuck, here we go again. And he he doesn't say anything. Like he's like I mean he his tone seems like that of a father that doesn't get it, but that's expected in character. He doesn't say anything shitty. He's working an extra job to put his son through college. It's like, cool. 
Like I love when he goes, my son is bisexual, and yeah, the, uh, his boss goes tremendous. Yeah, he just, <laughs> just he, fucking... he just mentions it. <laughs> they get the characterization that he's uncomfortable and he doesn't get it, but they don't be shitty about it. And that's the only case in this movie where they don't be shitty about something. I don't think that's true. I, f- I feel like it is. I feel no. like one of yeah, like every character in this movie is not. There's, there's nobody that you're rooting for because I hated uh, Terry. I think his name was. Is yeah, every. Oh no, yeah, Terry him. sucks. Yes. You're supposed to hate yeah. him for sure. But also, I'm just saying, like, I hated his acting and like every. Well, yeah, because Mark Wahlberg fucking sucks. Fucking spoke. I mean, he's not great, but normally he's not that bad. Holy he's pretty shit. bad. I don't. I can't think I mean, of a good Mark Wahlberg movie. I guess The Departed, but like that's not him. That's everyone else. I mean, he's a great uh, rapper. He's not. (laughs) No, like, I I feel Mm -hmm. like his whole position is that he thinks he's so much better than he actually is, and he's just a piece of shit. But, like, every... His whole whole entire, entire, like, storyline is literally him just being like, oh, I actually suck. But, again, like... He never realizes. They try to do it at the end, but, yeah, I, I don't think they do a good job at all. I don't think he ever had that moment ever. <laughs> and they they keep again they keep driving the like oh you learned this ironically like just just say you did it for your girlfriend that you want to. It's because he's he's got the tax toxic mask. But by the end of the movie, fucking make him grow as a character. Do something. I could not watch like most of the scenes when he was with his girlfriend like they were just so cringy i had yeah he's I shitty thought to his was, girlfriend. And i thought it was hilarious when he goes like he's gay he's wearing a shirt that says he's gay and he's just like yeah <laughs> and and like will ferrell's so shitty to his very nice wife for no reason uh, it, actually the perfect contrast oh, to this they, they totally give a reason for that but... the perfect contrast to this is Parks and Rec because they have the same bit where Gary has this gorgeous wife and people auxiliary characters to the scene get to make commentary and have the joke of what the fuck is happening here and Gary doesn't be shitty to his wife he is in a marriage that he's happy with he loves his wife and everyone on the outside is like like there's literally there's a line where he's like, uh, you know, I thought about it a lot. It doesn't make any possible sense. Like, what are you talking about? In Parks and Rec, it's it's this, it's a, it's it's this, it's the yeah. same scene that happens with like Will Ferrell and his wife to Gary and his wife with Mark Wahlberg being like, "What the fuck is happening here?" And in Parks and Rec, Ben is like, "What the fuck is happening here?" But in Parks and Rec, Gary doesn't have to be shitty to his wife. I don't know. I feel like Mark Wahlberg does call out. Uh, Will he doesn't Ferrell, really call though. out more. He's he just does, he like, says, "Don't you fucking talk about her that way." Okay, he do, he does say that played, once. That's he says played that out for times, like, but it's played in a different way. Of like, he doesn't he he doesn't care about the way that he's treating her. He cares because he thinks that she's hot. He's yeah, <laughs> like it, it's not the same. It's made very obvious, though, and it's played that way, I think, because there's been so many, like, buddy cop movies where shit like that has occurred. It's just everyone's so shitty in this movie. I I know that... I think that's great, though. It's like Seinfeld. That's, like, the point. Everyone's so shitty, and they don't have, like, the wherewithal to realize... But, like, sometimes, like, the Seinfeld characters have redeeming traits. No, they don't. Don't get the... Don't even fucking start. Sometimes they, they do. Not. They do, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there's like, yeah. There's, there's nothing redeemable like in this movie. Except That's for, fine. Except for Cap. There's nothing redeemable in <laughs> Seinfeld. Um, but yeah, it's just like everyone sucks a lot. Yeah, it's great. It's not great. <laughs> I love it. It's fucking hilarious. It's just like the just. It was so exhausting watching the movie with just like rampant sexism and homophobia. You just like, every uh, line. You mean like Mouse Hunt? What? 
every time there was a female character in Mouse Hunt, they were actually a piece of shit or they were like a sexual uh, item. No, wait, no, the the most screen time from a woman, I, I guess, I don't know if it'd be April or the two sisters, but the two sisters are just like, sure, they're they think they think they're sexual. they think they're attractive, but they're not made sexual. They're just. I don't know. They definitely are. There's scenes specifically where titties, like that's all that they do is show their titties. They're 100% nothing but a sexualization in that movie. And I feel like it's played off much worse than it's played off in this movie. Um, in this movie, you understand, like... Well, it's also two different situations, but I again, yeah. It's also for an adult, like, Mouse with understanding isn't. of, like... The people who are watching this are not going to be, like, children, unless, you know, you're just a really bad parent. But... But I, I'm not talking about the sexualization of women in this movie, either. I'm talking about being shitty to women in this movie. Which every character does. Hmm... But I don't think it's done in a way that's like, oh, like, it's not, what's the right word here? It's not done in a way that is like, fucked up, because it's made so obvious and over the top. And it's made to basically parody. Uh, I would say the homophobic comments are absolutely over the top. And I don't know, the people who are actually gay in the movie are fine. Like again, it comes yeah, but it's still an attitude of the movie. Is this going to be another time where you're like different time? What do you mean? Like with Shaun of the Dead. What do you mean? Like you were, you defended the the like N word joke. I did not defend it. I said at the time they were fucking throwing that around like it was nobody's business. I mean that's a defense. Is it a defense? You're excusing I mean, the movie doing it. I'm not excusing the movie for doing it. I'm saying that was literally like what they do at that time. Media at the time said that kind of shit. I'm not saying that makes this movie or makes Shaun of the Dead better for it. But yeah. It's a thing that was happening at the time. I'm just saying there's, there was too much in this movie. But and like, I don't think this even, movie is really aged at all. Even with the main the main topics are still toxic masculinity, and uh, you know, critiques on capitalism. It's interesting that like this isn't the movie he wanted to make, and like it's clear because the thing he is criticizing isn't actually like uh like it, the practices of the police force. Like, there's some of that, but he's really talking about, like you said, capitalism and, like, uh, like he starts getting into the, the housing stuff. And, like, this is a direct precursor to the big short that he's going to make in a few years. Mm -hmm. And, like, that, the big short is clearly the movie he wanted to make at this point from, like, the credits of this movie and some of the commentaries. But for whatever reason, it's rolled into a cop movie. I feel like that's just what he wanted to, like, focus on. You know what I mean? And I feel like it, it carried over years later. It's just weird. Like, it, it, there's like a small disconnect for me. Like, The Big Short is functionally more of a commentary than this movie is, even though well, this movie's the, the trying to be. The Big Short's also comedy. not a comedy at all. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's important, and I think that's what the director was trying to go for here. I think specifically was trying to go to show people who went in for a comedy got a bit of an education as well yeah but i i just would have like why not target the police force with it i think at the time it was less of an issue but they also sort of did they talked about how shitty the cops are just in general i guess they talk about how dancing and highsmith literally sucked like after the funeral, no one says anything nice about them. Yeah. And that's basically how it is in real life. Like, when people who are shitty being... Like, people who are shitty, people say nice things at their funeral, and then no one ever says nice things again about them, really. 
So I know they're not it like it's not sustainable for them to stay in the movie longer because they're like obviously schlocky over the top action characters. Um mm -hmm. and you like you can't just sustain that energy. But God, it would have been great if they survived just a bit longer to continue to tell Will Ferrell to shut the fuck up. I feel like you had the other characters to do that who I felt were like were worse. But the uh Sam Jackson's the only one he ever listened to when he was told to shut up. Are you sure? I mean, he did shut up, specifically shut up for Mark Wahlberg uh, early on, but then Mark Wahlberg was like, you shouldn't smile. No, he just starts humming again immediately after that. He does that because he, he asked him to fucking smile. Or to stop smiling. I don't know, man. This movie's bad. I don't know, man. I feel like it had some, like, it had some okay ideas and some okay jokes. Like, there were, like, times when I was like, oh, this is a little bit funny. And then, like you said, they just, like, they take it too far. And I'm like, oh, it's it's no longer funny. It was, it was like, funny for a second. I know. And then, they, and then they made it not funny. The Tooniverse Lion commentary was perfect. I don't know if I'd say it was perfect. Oh, it was perfect. I'd say it was there. But it, Listen, it, it was, it was like, establish a people love the tuna scene. I think people, so I good. think people just like talking about fights with lions. <laughs> Can we just take the next twenty minutes and instead of talking about the other guys, talk about a billion lions versus Pokemon? I'll take. Listen a second. here, you may think <laughs> that because of my beard <laughs> that I'm a hairy guy, but uh, I'll shave. Yeah, you're sure you're you sure are quoting this movie. It's I it's not funny, but great. I feel like the you're doing it. <laughs> I'm gonna really, look at. I don't know. I never like like that's that wasn't like clever. I don't know. It was. Just, it just yeah. It's happened. not. It's just a. It just yeah. It just happens. Yeah, but that's unexpected, and that's comedy. I like it. I don't know. I didn't like. It wasn't that funny. Because because there was no like context for it. I don't know. It was just uncomfortable. I haven't seen all of his movies, but of the ones I've seen, this is my least favorite Adam McKay movie. You've seen Vice? I have not seen Vice. I haven't seen Vice either. And like I don't like Anchorman or Talladega Nights that much, but I like it better than this. I love Talladega Nights. I Anchorman was good when it came out, but I feel like it's aged particularly poorly. I like Step Brothers better than this. I definitely like Big Short better than this. I did not really like Step Brothers either. No, I don't like Step Brothers that much either, but I like it better than this. I think that's wild. Is it? Step Brothers? No, it's wild to think Step Brothers is better than this movie. I don't think I feel like a lot of people go one way or the other on those two movies. I don't think it's crazy. Like, I'm not saying I don't think Step Brothers is a bad movie, but it's very much in the same vein of just like very random. But I feel like it it doesn't do as good of a job. I think if you ask most people, like their favorite of his movies, it would either be this or Step Brothers. But here's the thing: it's like. Do you think that this one does a better job because of like the commentary? Because I would say that it kind of fails at the commentary because it doesn't go like hard enough. I agree. It feels very thrown in, and it and it doesn't it's actually like ever whole... make it never it never actually makes a point. It just kind of is like it, it kind of does in thing. it kind of does in the credits. There's like yeah, a scroll. I mean, it's but... got an entire infographic in the credits. But like it's oh, not it's not in the movie. Hold on, but at the same time, I mean, most people, all they need to know in like 2010, when the shit was going down, is that, and I feel like this was important, and I was becoming an adult, I think, when I first watched this movie, and it was important to know that, like, the people at fault, like, no matter what fucking Fox News tells you, the people at fault are, like, the big banking industry. Like one hundred percent. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Like, that's not like 
Which is in the movie. Yeah, what is it? It definitely is. Like other that's... than the guy being like a weasel, but like that's more of like a character, and especially because it's a comedy, like you have to be a little. But they bit were more letting him feeling. get away like multiple times, and you could say it. And they let him get away in the end of the movie well. too. He's not the end villain. He is arrested and put in prison. But he's like, he's not. Uh, he just keeps getting away. With what's this. what's the word? He's not. He's not villainized at the end of the movie. Not enough. I'll agree with that. Like, you sure they put him in prison? But, but they don't, like, the movie doesn't even care that he's in prison. They show you him I in prison think... having a good time investing his cigarettes. Like, So my thing is, I, I think for this movie, um... It's less about him in particular, more about like the system is broken. But like, I don't think it shows the system at all. If that's it, your definitely argument. does. It doesn't. They literally it and only this is what shows. I like. It has one line where they're talking to the lawyer, and they mention other people involved in like the housing market collapse and well, stuff like that. It was actually way before that. They talk about Enron as well as Yeah, yeah. they they mentioned like a peep like, you know, a, a few people, a few responsible parties in one line and that's it. I think the entire from the very beginning when you talk to Bill and I like Bill. Bill's one of my favorite characters. Is he the cop that gets shit on? Yeah. He's great. I love Bill. But uh Bill's whole thing is that, you know, he's the treasurer. He's trying to, you know, get better investments for, you know, the return for the union. And yet, is it obviously, Bob? he's being taken advantage of. No, it's Bill. It's Bill. Is it Bill? It's Bill. I think it's Bill. I'm pretty sure it's Bill. Are you gaslighting me? No, it's Bob. Oh, no. Bob Littleford. Uh. But uh, I also loved, absolutely loved, Dirty, Dirty Mike and the Boys. Yeah. <laughs> that shit fucking cracked me up when they're like, we will have sex in your car again. I don't know. It was just very I random and I enjoyed it. But, like, again, that's just so awkward. Yeah, I mean, the whole movie has a bunch of awkward... I, here's the it's difference not between... not funny, it pains me. I it love... Me. I love... It's like uh, the original Borat. The whole movie's awkward. I saw the original Borat, and while it is awkward, like, I don't know. So just... that's different, though, because that's him in a scene with people that don't know what's happening. It's not crafted for the movie. Even the parts that are crafted, I would say, are definitely awkward. Like, you're, you're trying to tell me when he's uh, wrestling uh, his producer. That's not a bit awkward. It's been so long since I saw Borat, honestly. But anyway, I think the difference between this and why I like this and I dislike Mouse Hunt is because Mouse Hunt makes me cringe, but I do not cringe from this movie. I did cringe. I also cringed. I had absolutely zero cringe. I have friends that love this movie in all of the Adam McKay, Will Ferrell movies, and I just... Not a fan of Ant-Man? That's not Will Ferrell. But it's Adam McKay. Uh, Ant-Man's fine. I mean, there are definitely things I would change about Ant-Man. It's not like a 10 out of 10 movie, but it's, it's better than this. I'd rather I would watch Ant-Man infinitely many more times than this movie. It's insanity don't think it is but i i love the callbacks you may you may not like beating a dead horse but no, i love the fact that at the there's end, too many you know, callbacks. the multiple peacock i don't even I know gotta if really call it but the peacock I, no the peacock only calls back once that's no, fine multiple times and or at the end the maybe twice flies away at the very end credits like right right before the credits roll okay okay see a but, peacock flying. but that is a callback in a different way i also love the music in this movie and i feel like they did it like perfectly i love the punk I thought it was bang. I, I I'll agree with you that the peacock one 
isn't one of the problematic ones because it calls back in different ways and iterates okay. on itself. And again, Bill calls back. Going back to the uh, efficiency of storytelling, this movie has is actually very efficient for a comedy. It's efficient because there's fucking nothing happening in this movie. Absolutely yeah. not. No, there's no, like, none of the humor really happens and then nothing becomes of it. Like, something becomes of it in every, in every instance. I don't know about that, Chief. <laughs> I do know about that. Like I was saying with Bill, the whole thing, like, he ends up kind of being, like, in league that's not with like the bad a, guy. That, that doesn't make it efficient storytelling. That's just, like... Uh, I don't know. I love the fact that Terry couldn't see, like, they're talking about, oh, well, we're going to reinvest. He's like, shut the fuck up. Like, what? Are you even, who cares? And it's like, oh, well, you do. I thought that was nice. Um, other, like, and obviously there's comedic scenes that I liked. I know I what I know what least... score you're going to give this movie, and I hate you for it already. What? You're going to give it like an eight or a nine. Probably. That's what I'm between. I love. What did you give a uh, mouse hunt, real quick? Uh, I give it an eight. And that's an infinitely worse movie. Like I would literally kill myself before I watch Mouse Hunt again. I did. I did dislike Mouse Hunt more than I disliked this movie. Part of Mouse Hunt is. I mean, I do like Mouse Hunt more than you guys. Just to be clear, but part of it was just like I'm gonna give this a good score because they didn't like it, and it'll make them mad. I don't, I don't think I've ever done that. Jokes on you. I I was not <laughs> mad. I was just like surprised. Well, yeah, I was like, whatever. You saw it. As it a listen. It stuck it. in your head, and you just brought it up. So. I didn't. No, no, I'm talking to Luke. It's, an, it's a negative thing. I do like Mouse Hunt, though. It wasn't like I was like... It's yeah. not like I think Mouse Hunt is like a 3 out of 10 and I gave it an 8 out of spite. No, I legitimately think, at the very least, for me, it's an 8, for sure. Um, like, I probably still would have given Mouse Hunt like a 6. I like Mouse Hunt. I, I was thinking about doing that. Like, maybe I should rate this higher just because... And I'm like, nah, that's... That's not my true rating. Well, you, maybe I should rate this higher when you're between an 8 or a 9. So you're considering giving this movie a 10? You think this movie's perfect? No, not this one. I'm talking about previous one. Um, I forget exactly which one. But I was like... The only reason I did it with Mouse Hunt is because it, like, it didn't matter. Like, Mouse Hunt was so obviously tanked that like, <laughs> it's, like, it's not in the running for Fine, anything. And I'm giving this a fucking 10. No, I'm kidding. But, this uh, movie's not going to tank, though. Jonathan's going to give it like a 5. Maybe, but you, know, you don't know me. Oh yeah, Jonathan. But was I? I am I right on the Marvel. money again, Jonathan? No, no, it's a four. Then. I it think. Was, but you're not right. I think four, some then. of the some of the quotes, and again, it, yeah, they're just really quick. I just feel like the dialogue for me, it like I laughed multiple times from some of the stuff. Like when they called back the deer vagina thing. <laughs> That's, That's not funny. That's I, just it was like, still funny. When, when he goes, is um, it me or does it smell? Yeah, it, it, that doesn't even make sense. That's not even like That's a clever callback. No, it's uh, not a clever callback. It's just random uh, so, and I like that humor. Uh, and what can I say? Oh boy. Uh, then why, why didn't you give the Lego movie a 10? I felt like I, the ports that I laughed at, I laughed at. Like I, I did not laugh once at this movie. You did I not like once a Lego movie either. It's true. I, I was I started writing down. I was gonna write down lines that I hated in this movie, and then I wrote down one and got exhausted and stopped writing things down for this movie. Because hmm. fucking Sam Jackson says, "Did someone call nine one one? Holy shit!" Which is a terrible line, like just it's a god awful line. Is that they suck? They're literally pieces of shit, and they're like looked up to. That's not them being pieces. It's just. It's just a no, bad dialogue line. But they're like, they suck. And the same thing can be said with the uh, with their like rivals. Their jokes are literally like trash. But that's I, I genuinely I think the only two good jokes in the movie are aim for the bushes because it's just ridiculous over the top. There's, <laughs> there are no bushes down there. It's just <laughs> them. Like, I, I mean, that part had me like dying, like rolling. Yeah, the when I first saw this I movie, I, I enjoyed that scene. And then this time, like I knew it was coming, but I'm still like, Aim for the Bushes is maybe the best scene in this movie. Um, 
and then Michael Keaton with the TLC stuff. Like it's again, it's overdone, but I it's the only joke that is overdone that I wasn't and like holy also shit. Also, when he's when he's in Bath and Body Works, and he's like, and we got a serial rapist in Lincoln Park, and then he goes like, uh, forget it. Well, actually, don't forget about it if you're in the area. Yeah, walk in pairs. yeah, walk in pairs. Like, like Michael Keaton's good in this whole movie. entire character is great. Like, yeah, it's I I do love and it you know on this this is probably like my fifth watch, and I will say Michael Keaton. Uh, is definitely the star of this watch. He is the he's the best in this movie. Like it's not even close. He's definitely up there. Who do you think is better? Derek Cheater. He's like he's not even I'm just kidding. A character. <laughs> Dude, I like Will Ferrell. I'm not gonna lie. I like I like some of his random shit. And it's part of the reason why I liked Lego Movie. I don't feel like Lego Movie was as random as this. Because this was random and, like, it's trying to just Oh, yeah, be... this is definitely a Zoomy movie, for sure. This is trying to be as, like, out there as possible. Whereas, like, Lego Movie was... It was fast, but, like, a lot of the jokes were clever. Like, they had some uh, thought behind it. It wasn't, I mean, like... they were definitely random. But There was, was random parts, but those weren't the funny parts. I don't know. The one I liked that I continue to remember is definitely like random. It's I, it's always going to be an uphill battle for me because I just like I don't like Will Ferrell. So I loved the fucking wooden gun, the wooden gun and the desk pop, and everyone. Uh, a lot of the people I work with are like ex cops who uh, now work in like an office job, and they talk about desk pops all the time, and. I like that. I love the wooden gun. I love that it gets fucking like uh oiled up and like made like fancier by the end. And then they take like, like it's just stuff like that. I, I like it. I like that it continues to like get pulled back. I don't know. It's crazy that we like some of the same comedies and also that we are so divisive on some of the comedies. And they got real for a minute when they were having the uh, the scene in the elementary school. And the guy's like, I'm going to give you a few tips to stay safe out there. Number one, try your hardest to not be black or Hispanic. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and then the ride along, they take a ride. <laughs> like a fucking car. Like, I loved it. Um, and again, like I hate those characters and I hate their jokes, but like when the characters aren't trying to be funny is when they're funny. You mean when they're not being sexist or homophobic and they're just telling jokes? Yeah. No, not telling <laughs> jokes. They're, they're not actually like that was not a joke for that character to say. Well, but it is a joke in the movie. Yeah, I agree. But like the characters like telling jokes are obviously they're trash. And even if you there's a post credit scene where uh Harry Hoyt is telling a joke and it's fucking awful and Will Ferrell's basically like uh, I think the the last few words they were interesting but uh, as far as content it was terrible and it's kind of what I when I when I heard Will Ferrell say that I'm like that's exactly what Brendan's gonna say yeah cause this movie sucks shit <laughs> I mean that's your opinion yeah I know I know people do not agree with me and, and also so many people don't agree with me. It's great that they bring back face back. Sure. They catch, they catch the murderer using the face back app. Yeah, that's... That was, that's, a, that was an okay callback, but then... It's, I mean, it's not a joke, but it's at least a functional story callback. Like, but That's what I mean. Like, a lot of the story, it seems random, and maybe it is at first, but then, like, it gets they thrown make back in. Random. Yeah, yeah. And okay, one thing that had me dying the first time I watched this, but it was because I had like just tried it and I was like, damn, this is so good was cucumber water. Yeah, cucumber oh, water is good. And what? it was the first I disagree with that. Oh, it's so good. I would eat, I would drink so much cucumber water. It's literally the I like I like water infused really with like anything. Like 
but nah, like lemon, not my thing. Lime, like lemon not my one. thing. Coconut, I, maybe. Orange, but I, like cucumber slaps in water. What like about just, just regular water? It's yeah. good, but like cucumber water is cool as a cucumber, if you will. I, I mean, it's just, but like imagine if it was just regular water. And also, some of the cinematography in this movie is really good. Like what? The uh, let me be Jonathan this up. week. The car chase at the very beginning, <laughs> I thought it was very good, and it was very awesome that they blew up Trump Tower. I, nothing stood out as like really but good. I loved the helicopter uh, getting golf balled. Now that's just funny because but, helicopters hold on. Blow up. What does that have to do with cinematography? Hold yeah, on, the, not, the whole entire car CGI. chase towards the end. It was, but for the time. No, good cinematography. Like that was just like a regular ass. I know that it was... is a regular ass, regular action movie explosion. Like yeah, that has that's special. not cinematography. Even. Well, again, cin- cinematography is not CG, so you need to rethink that completely. That's um, but it's the framing. Like that yeah, was just it's the shot. I liked the explosion. framing. I liked. Uh, it was, just, it was I specifically a... really liked the scene where they uh tried to arrest uh. Tried to arrest the bad guy right there, like during the meeting when they were trying to hand over the uh, the union, not 401k, but the other word. That right there, the pension fund and all the uh, all the paper goes up in the air and the paper starts getting like the paper starts exploding and like everyone starts shooting it like them but missing and shooting everyone else i i thought that was an excellent scene right there i thought the car like, chase scene talking this, about but it know, wasn't Grand like great auto. cinematography yeah no very, cinematography sticks out in my head it's all very i, th- I thought it was it good was all very very normal very usual what did, what did you think of the uh when they got drunk I, oh that was that was good that was pretty good but you know, I, I'm not saying it was like it was. It's the best cinema of the year. Yeah, <laughs> like, sure. but it. I liked it. I and obviously a lot of it was like, there was a lot of like simple scenes. But that's okay. I mean, it's a comedy. It's not like a fucking. You know, it's not Avatar. <laughs> no, no, but it's okay. Either. So, but that's why I think Shaun of the Dead is a great contrast to this because Shaun of the Dead's a comedy, but it has good cinematography in it. Is I don't know. Nothing I also, think, like, stood out. I think they're about that, equal. But, like, you think their Shaun cinematography is equal? Yeah. No, I would no. say Shaun of the Dead was, like, a little better. But again, nothing, like, super stood out for that. No, I feel like they were in enclosed spaces for way too long in Shaun of the Dead. But when they're not, Shaun of the Dead has great shots. It does, but it has, like, three before they're like, yep, we're in the bar. And as soon as they go in the bar, it's basically just... To be honest, and this is fine, but it's a bottle episode. Sure. I'm, I'm not talking about in the bar. I'm talking about the sweeping it's street quarter, shots. Not even, I'm it's talking more about than a quarter of the movie. Seeing Sean and Nick through the hole in the zombies, great. I mean, they're in like the same yard and they just like paint a different color. But. I'd say it's again the the scenes that are good are really good in Shaun of the Dead. I don't think this movie has any really good scenes. This movie, I disagree. I think it has a few scenes that are really good. In regards to cinematography, I would say this is a movie. Oh well, I don't know that that the that bar scene. Okay, the the bar scene is the only one, and it's like kind of cribbing on the Matrix, like on rails scene. But yes, that one is good. But other than that, I literally nothing. I don't know. I liked a lot of the car chase scenes, especially the first time I watched this movie. Then why didn't but you rate also... ten and higher? Hmm. Then why didn't you rate ten and higher? It has better car chase scenes. That's all that movie is, though. That's patently untrue. There's like and two car I chase would say scenes. That in I ten. dislike. I dislike the fact that, like, I didn't like the whole like reverse time thing anyway and when they made it like a main feature of the car chase i didn't like that so for tenant like i just didn't like a lot of it this is all just baffling 
and again, Tenet, like, and I think Jonathan has said it before, comedies get reviewed differently. Yeah. Okay, but the cinematography of comedies doesn't get reviewed differently. No, when you when you're talking about cinematography, you're Your talking about cinematography. Lower, like unless you're talking about a okay, Marvel okay, but cinematography is comedy, cinematography. Like Man or, uh, geez, I'm trying to think of another comedy Marvel. Uh, why are you I trying guess to Thor Ragnarok? Comedy? Yeah, why does it have to be Marvel? Because they are the only ones I can think of who've had like 200 mil plus budgets on a comedy. But it's like, like cinematography is cinematography. Not uh, Shazam, I guess. Could be DC. Yeah, but that was horrible. I didn't like any of it. That's interesting. A lot of people did like it. I like Shazam. I did not like Shazam. I don't think I it's a it great weird. movie, but I, I thought it was so like well cliche enough. and like boring. And I thought the colors in the movie, like uh, other than the powers being used, it's just really dull. Like everything has like a blue tint to it. I don't know. I'd give Shazam like a six or seven. I'd probably give it a four or five. I haven't seen it. I don't really care to. Yeah, I was just kind of like, oh, I'll watch this, and then I watched it, and I was like, hmm. okay. That's it. But I also didn't find any of the humor in Shazam good at all. Yeah, the humor is not great. And if you're a comedy movie and an action movie, and your action is kind of weak, and your comedy's weak. I like Shazam opinion, as a character, though. Eh, yeah, I'll agree with that. But I think that's one thing, like, I don't care. When it comes to a movie, like, I don't I don't need a good... I feel like it matters more for a TV show, because you, it gives you something to come back Well, to. it matters more because it's a character, like, I grew up reading, though. Oh, well, I'm talking about the movie. I haven't seen the comic. The the one but, uh, the one Shazam comic, the single Shazam comic that all yeah, of Shazam comes from. Series, Shazam. <laughs> but uh, no, like I, I feel like characters matter way more in TV shows. I mean, or characters in, like, still matter movie. in movies. Not it, it's me. nice when there's characterization on your movie characters. That was again, that was my biggest problem with Tenet. It's that there, no one is a character. I think it depends. Because everyone's a character in this movie. Mm. Will Ferrell is Will Ferrell. That's a character. That's, I mean, that's, this, <laughs> this, that's him being him like every other Will Ferrell movie. Uh. What Will Ferrell movie is he not that character? Um, I would say, what was the movie where he ends up finding out that he's like a storybook character? What? What? It, Will Ferrell movie where he finds out he's a story. It's like a more serious movie for Will Ferrell. Look this up. I want to say it came out in like two. Oh, is it um uh uh? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's um, look, let me find it in his list. It's it has fiction in the title. Stranger than fiction. Yep, that's it. Sure. Yeah, I haven't seen that one, but I, I, that's like so. Every comedy actor has one serious movie where people are like, "But here he is in this role," and that's the one that comes up for Will Ferrell. But I haven't seen it. I don't like Will Ferrell, so I never um, bothered. It's like it's like yeah, a he's, Jim Carrey he's with. Very uh, much, I will say this: he's very much like you either like him or you don't. It's like Jim Carrey with Eternal Sunshine. It's the same thing. Jim Carrey has had more though. Jim Carrey is actually a pretty good. Um, I don't feel like I wouldn't watch a Will Ferrell movie for him being in a serious role. I wait. Wouldn't. What other Jim Carrey serious roles are there? Like not other humor at all. Three. He's still kind of doing his shtick though, until the end where he's like fully insane. I don't know. Also, that movie's bad. Yeah, it I mean, wasn't I would, great. I would say the Truman Show is not. Yeah, no, he's he's show. still Jim Carreying it up. A little. But the the also, movie's more serious, serious, but he character. isn't. I mean, it's the same thing. Hold on, it's the same thing with uh, what's his face? I'm trying to remember his name here. Uh, the guy from Billy Madison. Fuck, what can I think? Of Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler in uh, all of his serious roles are he's still Adam Sandler, like um, unavoidable. 
kind of he he is more of actually acting as a character in some of his serious roles, like Sandy Wexler and like the Cobbler. Like I buy him more as a character than just as Adam Sandler. Is that more being just a role? You haven't seen him like in a funny movie in a while before those movies came out. I mean, I saw Jack and Jill like right before those movies. And Jack and Jill <sighs> is a turd. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Devocation. But like, you, all right, how many points lower would you put Jack and Jill? The bottom, just like that. That would be a one. Out of like ten. one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I think I would give Jack and Jill a one out of ten. Do, like our, I forget what we said. Does our skill have a zero? I don't think, I think so. You I, guys, you guys said no. I, I said no. I don't care. Okay, then yeah, Jack and Jill's a one for sure. Because I think it's a, a zero very like bad. There movie. is no movie. It's basically a DNF. Like did not finish. Yeah. The movie. <laughs> Jack and Jill's a very bad movie. Yeah, I remember like. Hey, but Christ- you're gonna be Christina mad when I score it? this movie. Didn't Christina get it? And like, no, I don't think it was Christina. I think they watched no, it at I, Grandma's house. Yeah, it was at Grandma's, and I think Christina's the one who picked it out. Oh, maybe I don't know. I don't and know. And I it remember out. just being like, I, I left. I stopped like watching. Maybe like five <laughs> minutes later, and Grandma was like, "Yeah, it's it's the humor is too crass," and I was like, "That's not the problem." <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit about that. Like, I like Grandma's boy. Like, I don't like this movie because it just sucks bad it's it's a horrible horrible film but anyway i um you know after i watched it this time i was like oh i only had like five laughs where Previous entries, I had had, like, significantly more laughs. Yeah, I had a nice round zero. Yeah, but that's because you went into it the way you did. Did you laugh during Shaun of the Dead, though? No, but I've seen Shaun of the Dead, like, eight times. But did you ever laugh at Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, probably. Like, at, like at what points? There's probably. Really no jokes in them. Yeah, I don't know. I saw, I the, like I saw the movie, the like, ten years ago. I don't remember. Shaun of the Dead is not, like, a make-you-laugh movie. It's more of, like, a... I think there's some funny bits in it. Like a scenario laugh. I uh, The first time I saw this movie, I might have laughed a couple times. I don't know. I, mean, I probably laughed at Aim for the Bushes. At what? Aim for the Bushes. I mean, I, but that's the thing. Like, the parts in this movie, when you get, like, when I got a laugh the first few times I watched this movie, it was like a fucking, like, my belly hurts. Oh, I, I didn't laugh that much. But the thing is, like, Aim for the Bushes works because it's so unexpected and just bizarre. So, like, a rewatching. But that's how they all are. I know, but like They're a rewatching. Every single that's... joke in this entire movie is unexpected and bizarre. I don't know if that's true. And maybe that I... makes me an unexpected and bizarre person. I guess Deer Vagina could be unexpected and bizarre. It sure is unexpected story. and bizarre, but it's not funny. Yeah, I just don't I, think... I didn't think it was funny the first time they talk about it, but when he brings it up again, uh, I laughed. Urshan, when Urshan brings it up, like, yeah, it kind of somebody... made it worse for me. Almost. No, it doesn't because it, it, it literally it makes, it, it makes it worse for me that too. David Urshan is literally the one who, who originally introduced the deer because how the fuck would he know what deer vagina smells like? So the deer vagina that they originally found in the in the car was his. Or How, the do movie just doesn't care about that and just put it in to call back irrelevantly. Because, call, because callbacks are funny. Ha ha ha. You get it? Because we said that earlier. So Listen, this, def- this movie definitely has callbacks, but I think they're, they're mostly good. There's a couple. The, they're like, not mostly good. They're just really, name me a callback that was like really bad. I deer like vagina. all of them. Yeah, deer <laughs> vagina for sure. Um, Peacock is fine. I, I'm struggling to even remember the jokes in this movie. The quote-unquote jokes in this movie. The hot women being interested in him is fine until it goes on too long. Um, I mean, Heather Locklear. What else gets called back to? But then that joke, like, whenever they call it back, like... It just again ruins his character by making him like even more of a shithead. 
Right, and it's yeah, he sucks. that I mean, that that's that callback's the, the thing though. He that callback's suck. bad because it's the same joke every time. That's why Peacock right. works because it changes. So the first time Mark Wahlberg's like, "I'm a peacock, you gotta let me fly," and everyone's like, "Okay, weird that he called himself a peacock." The second time, the captain's like, "Okay, let's just nip this in the bud. Peacocks don't fly." And then the third time, you see a peacock flying. That's good. That's a callback that iterates on itself. That's good. Every other callback is like, what if we said the same thing again? Comedy. Where? Every they other joke in the movie. They don't bring up the Dear Vagina, vagina thing again. The Dear Vagina, all they do, the only callback is like a five second thing where he just simply says. The same exact thing. No, he, he doesn't. He doesn't say, I found a Dear Vagina in the car. At first I thought it was human lives, blah, blah, blah. He says, do you guys think, do you guys smell Dear Vagina? Like that's that's all it is, and then it's... it quickly just brushes. Um, the Prius is brought up in the exact same way every time. I agree, but the person making the joke is the same person, and you also like. No, a few people talk about us Prius. Hmm. A few people talk about us Prius. I mean, all the cops get in on it basically, game, but they just want to, you know, it, that's their f shack. So little river band playing in the car is just. Let's just turn on Little River Bend again and mention them. I mean, they don't mention them again. They just play this. No, they do mention Little it again because he says, "Oh, I've always got Little River Bend queued up. I've got six CDs no, but in that's, here." that's that's in the same joke. That's from the very first joke. I'm that's, pretty sure it's a slightly no, later he scene. Goes, he he puts it on, and then uh, Mark Wahlberg takes the disc out and throws it out, and then he says, "I've always got I got six more discs." Oh, I thought it was the yeah, next then, time they got in the when car. He, when he when he plays it again, like at the end, like at the final callback, when you're supposed to be like, "Ah, ha, ha, ha," he does um, he does say "Little River Band" and then the title of the song, like instead of just I don't remember it, that, like, but yeah. it's possible. Um, Mark Wahlberg shot Derek know, Jeter. The, the only the only. I mean, a lot of people bring it up, just like the Yankee Clipper. I wouldn't say that it, it's a joke. It's I just think what like, his title is within the police department. I think it's supposed to be a joke. Mm, I don't think it is when they're like, the fucking Yankee Clipper's here. Like, I don't, I don't think it's meant to be a joke in any way if they're just saying it. The grandma going back and forth goes on, I think, one too many times. Otherwise, it yeah, would be good. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, it's one too many, yeah. That's a, every joke in this movie is one too many times. But it's not like it, it doesn't like ruin the joke. Except for like, TLC, which again, TLC would be one too many times if I didn't like Michael Keaton in this movie. I don't know. That just seems like favoritism to me. He's biased. I am biased. I'm, you, I'm acknowledging that it would be like too many the times. Old woman, you don't like her comic delivery, and you love Michael. Keaton. But I mean, I'm literally acknowledging that it would be too many times. I just like Michael Keaton in this movie. I like Dr. Sheila Gamble in this movie. Her, she's fine. She's, she mostly she's exists it. to be shit on, though. But she's an angel. She's perfect. Yeah, it'd be so much better if Will Ferrell didn't shit on her the whole movie. I feel like by the end, like it definitely by the point where they're about to come back together, there's also he'd no longer again shit on her. the dinner table when he is talking about her outfit way too many times. Yeah, I mean, I was never too, you know... Because that's, that's what like, this but fucking again, movie I don't, does. I don't need a comedy to have, like... Well, I didn't like this joke, so I don't like this movie anymore. Like, that's not... Okay, but I, it's not one joke. So the point you're making is not It's applicable. like, okay, some people... Some of these movies that I've watched, especially you, you're a big... You do this a lot, the movies that are comedy, and you've had two now. It's a joke what's that the continues over like eight minutes. Hold on, what's the other one? What do you mean? You said I, I've it's had mouse, two now. Mouse Hunt is the other one. Of the mouse hunt. It's, it's a joke that like the scene is the joke and it just fucking continues for like minutes. Where her talking about... Wait, what, what about scene in Shaun of the Dead continues? Uh, the scene where they're pretending to be zombies. That scene does not go on that long. It goes on for quite a while. It does. It does minutes. not go on that long. Is it not two or three minutes? It's maybe two minutes. 
That's I guarantee you. You you wrap back all of the times he just mentions it, and it's probably twenty seconds. Okay, what about the runtime of people making misogynistic comments in this movie? I would say forty seconds, which I think is still probably forty seconds too long. But I feel like they also don't have any like bad representation. Also, the grandma scene goes on way too long. Yeah, that one. I, I like. I say I totally agree with that one. But again, it, it doesn't make the rest. But yeah, no. Like, my my issue isn't the isn't the runtime of these jokes. It's how many times it happens. It's just it's too many times. I understand that Adam McKay apparently thinks callback equals funny, but that's not true. Iterate know, on your callbacks. Other Adam McKay movies and. You don't agree with that, that that's what he thinks is... Well, he did for this movie, absolutely. There's callbacks in others of his movies as well. Yeah, but... But again, like, iterative callbacks are good in a comedy. Even if I didn't like the joke, like, I, I don't think I'm a peacock, you have to let me fly, again, is you, like you've a... Given, you've given, I think, no example so far of, an, of a non-iterative callback. What do you mean? I just gave a bunch of examples of a non-iterative callback. It's not callback. an iterative. It's not a, even a callback if it's within the next. It's if it's within a thirty-second period, it's not a callback. The the hot women being interested in him is non-iterative. Mm. It's mm. absolutely non-iterative. It's the yeah. same joke every time. That's probably one example. The TLC joke is also non-iterative. I, I, I did it. I did not find that joke funny. I don't. That's because you don't I know, know you TLC. I know. Before your time. Go, yeah, don't before go. your time. It's like a lot. A lot of the quotes in this movie are like. But no, that's absolutely non-iterative. Uh, don't end. Uh, it's a hundred percent. Like you can't just end because it's it's not my iterative. End is that? They do not, he does not like mention, he does not say creep, creep like four times. He does okay, not but say, don't that, go. that doesn't make it iterative. It's the same joke with just a slightly, it's, it's just a different it's, song in t title interested. But that's or literally iterative. what iteration is. No, the peacock joke iterates. It's the joke played the in joke? a different way. The duck joke? Yeah. What are you talking about? It's the terrible joke at the end of the movie. At the, after the end of the credits. It's not good. So I, I actually don't even know what you're talking about. I didn't watch the credits this time. Because yeah. I, was, I was checked out. I just had it on and then I was like, oh, I, I forgot about yes, this. Do you normally watch the credits? Sometimes. I can't I, I, if it's my first time watching a movie... I mean, if the credits have something in them, I'll watch the yeah. credits. If the credits have absolutely nothing but like... A very, it's, you know what's really annoying is when credits go by extremely slowly and nothing happens. Yeah. Like, I understand you're trying to, like, I'm repping my peeps. But, like, no one is going to sit there and watch it. Like, and include, even if it's, like, a dumb graphic, include something. Like, I, I think, I forget what movies, I think, like, Disney movies used to have, like, when it went to, like, special effects, like, something special happened with special effects. And, like, when, like, Q&A happened, like, I don't know, like, you'd see Bro. people, I don't know. Also, you said him being shitty to his wife happens in one scene. He's shitty to his wife in multiple scenes. There's two. But what I'm trying to say is it's not, like, it's just, like, it's not continued, like, for two minutes straight. But, I mean, it's unnecessary, really like not funny, and just, like, serves nothing. I mean, the point is to make him seem like an asshole. But why does That's he need to be point. an asshole? He's the only... That's old... who the character is. But he, it's not who the character is. In every other interaction with every single other person in the movie, he's not an asshole. His character is his not character. an asshole. Before that point, his character is almost being super pleasant. Yes, he's... That's what I was saying. He's so easy to make the redeemable character in this movie until his wife is introduced because he's not involved in the toxic masculinity at work he's getting the short end of the stick from work he's kind even when people are shitty to him and then his wife is introduced and he's a piece of shit for no reason and then after like, like they they leave the scene with his wife he's not a piece of shit to anyone else his ex-girlfriend fucking calls him up and is being real you know 
aggressive with him, and he's still not shitty at all to her. There's a flashback to him literally being a pimp, and he's not shitty to any of those women either. It's just his wife. So you cannot say, oh, it serves to make his character an asshole, because it that, doesn't. That's even funnier. No, it's not. It's not yes, funny. It is, what? It's unexpected. That does okay. <sighs> unexpected doesn't necessarily. It's gotta like. This it's gotta is, have some cleverness to it. Yeah, this like, is the school. Unexpected and cleverness. What you what you're calling for right now is the absolute school of Zoomer humor. That's what I'm saying. This movie is Zoomer humor, though. In the worst way. It's bad know. Zoomer. It's got bad. This bad is this is Zoomer. random and loud equals funny. I wouldn't say random and loud. But I mean, that's that school of thought. Like, that's I a mean, thing that's like in Hunt. Zoom. Oh, random, things just keep happening that are random. But it's not even funny. Like, to me, that's just... And that's why humor is hard. To, and we talked about this. But wait, no. The stuff in Mouse Hunt isn't random, though. You see them setting up all these mouse traps, And then... Really, where they just get exploded into a lake. And they're in the lake. That's just, okay, the lake is random. Just, the, the whole fucking movie's random. The whole fucking... No, no, no. Because, like... So, like, uh, Christopher Walken... With his... He just randomly has a, a house. Like, nah, dude. The whole... He randomly has a house? What? Random. The guy who died. The father. Oh, it was pretty random when Will Ferrell had a house in this movie. That was fucking wild, dude. He didn't live in the fucking house. He just had the property for no reason. Like, effectively, absolutely zero reason. The impetus of the movie, then? Like... How 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 do you propose that house gets introduced in that movie? I think it doesn't. You you completely change the story so that some one of them buys the house and then falls on hard times or something because the way that it happens is just makes no sense. I d I, I don't think that it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it inherit also like inheritance was like a big theme in like 90s movies for whatever reason people just inheriting shit when people died I'm not saying that it was clever writing I'm just not no sure I just don't think it's like it. wacky random it's a bad example for what we were just talking about the fact that it's an inherited house that like is worth 50 million dollars well that's just like the plot of the movie though like that's not like a yeah. trying to be funny. Yeah, but that's what it's I'm not, saying. It's not funny that he found a house. Like that's just Yeah, we're talking like yeah, wow. again, the example we were talking about was like random humor bits and you're just talking about the setup to the movie. I'm saying the whole thing when they like it made no sense for them to do any work on the house whatsoever. It, it makes no sense for people to go backwards in Tenet either, but that's the impetus of the movie. It makes no sense for it makes a, perfect a, sense in Tenet why they go backwards. No, I mean, it doesn't. They're trying to destroy the world. It, it, the science of going backwards makes no sense. No, absolutely not. But you said it makes no sense as far as the movie's concerned. Which I mean, it doesn't. It makes perfect sense. He's trying to, do, or not him, but you know, the people from the future are trying to destroy the past, essentially. I mean, it's one guy. I mean, he's just like the agent for the people in the future. He dies. Like, that's his like. Uh, my point is like... You have to buy into a certain degree of the impetus of a movie, no matter what the movie is. It doesn't make sense for a train to be self-sustaining and go around the world exactly one year at a time. It doesn't make sense for two people to be linked and switch bodies. I think it does. Yeah, because you buy into those movies. So you accept the premise, even if it's illogical, because it's well, the impetus accept, of the movie. And I think it should be believed that... That Will Ferrell is a piece of shit to exactly one person? That, that all of the police officers in this are very problematic. Yeah, and, and that would have been like fine if that was the commentary he was making, but he, he didn't want to make that movie. He wanted to make the housing market and the capitalist bigwigs are the bad guy movie. So characters are just shitty for no reason in this movie. No, and and Will Ferrell is he, shitty he to his wife for absolutely zero problems. reason. I think that this movie was trying to do both at the same time, which was a mistake. It does a horrible job of cop commentary, and Will Ferrell being shitty to his wife is maybe some leftover cop commentary bullshit, but it doesn't work in the movie, and it makes no sense. I don't know. I think Danson and Highsmith do a great job cop commentary. And how no, it doesn't. They're the heroes of the whole city. 
And the only line is a throwaway from the captain where he's like, you know, those weren't good guys, right? I mean, they've mentioned that multiple times. I don't think they really do. At the funeral, they literally talk about how both of them weren't really that great. Like, while the casket is being put into the ground, they talk about that. Do people talk about it, or does Mark Wahlberg just say it? It's I'm really sure Mark, Mark Wahlberg Walter. says it, and also, uh, what's his name? The guy who gets in a fight with Michael, Mark Wahlberg. No, he doesn't say it. They're, he just see They're just the fighting movie. over being the next detectives. Yeah. They're not... Yeah, it's nothing to do with actually Dancing still... in Highsmith. It's just they want to be the next Dancing in Highsmith. That's still just... To me, it's commentary. Like that... Comment, if, if you went to a movie and they were just like, my opinion on this matter is this. You'd be like, well, this is fucking worst movie, like preachy movie. Okay, yeah, but but that's I mean, not commentary on cops. You gotta, really. have a, you gotta have a little bit of something. I just don't think they had enough. They didn't say anything. They yeah, said, I mean, I'll they agree with that. They didn't. They they could have said more. Yeah, they set it up, but, but I think it's anything. I think at the time, to two thousand ten. And and again, my issue isn't the commentary. It's it it doesn't make sense with Will Ferrell's characterization how he acts. Police being kept in check in twenty ten was way less of like a social like not saying it wasn't a social issue but it was way less of a social issue that was being like paid attention to that today you're trying to make something out of it that at the time like regular people within the united states just did not have i mean cops being abusive to their wives is not like a new reveal yeah yeah, that's definitely i agree with that and that's that's what i'm saying like the will ferrell thing is maybe a carryover where it's like cops are shitty to their wives kind of thing but like it just doesn't play with this character in this movie that's my whole point i think like i said because he's so like good natured everywhere else that it is unexpected and even though you may not uh... i just don't think it's funny because she totally doesn't deserve it in any way so it would have been funny if like there was like a I don't know. Like, what you're saying is anything unexpected is funny. That's one of the qualifiers for being uh, humor. I mean, things can be expected and still be funny? Mm, I don't know, man. I feel like it's cringy at that point. Like, if you know exactly what's going to happen before it happens, and it's just kind of like... Oh, uh, it's gonna you know like Okay, uh, if if my like friend if my friend got drunk and like we were walking over a bridge that's like real short over water and it's a deep enough river and he starts like standing on the banister, I know he's gonna fall his drunk yeah. ass is gonna tumble in. It's that still gonna be sad. funny. It does not make me funny at all. It will absolutely as long as he's not hurt, it's I'm gonna laugh. I don't know. I mean, I know for a fact. I know for a fact in that moment. If it's if it's me and you, and I'm drunk and I fall in a river uninjured, you're gonna laugh. I know for a fact. I don't know. You, you can pretend all you want. I know for a fact you laugh. I don't think you do. I'd probably just be more irritated than anything else. Why would you be irritated? Because. First of all, I know I'm going to be the one who has to take care of the problem. What do you mean, take care of the problem? Because you'd be all drunk and shit and wet. And you're going to get fucking uh, some disease. Yeah, you're not my doctor. Pneumonia or something. You, you're not the yeah, one. Yeah, but then I would feel personally fucking responsible. If you're like, haha, you're not, you're not sick yet. You're not fucked up yet. Like... I bet uh, in the I'm moment like, you no, laugh. No, it's not funny. Hmm? I bet in the moment you laugh. I don't know. You can laugh and be concerned. Yeah. Like, it's not like... There's, there's things where I would do that, but that wouldn't be... I don't think that would be one of them. And my point is just like if you were, something... if you were sober, it would be funny. <laughs> okay, sure. Then I, I, I just... I picked a drunk because it 
I would it makes more sense for someone to fall in. Be, I would okay, fine. I'm sober and I fell him. in a river. You're what? But like, it, it, I, I'm just saying like, things don't have to be 100% unexpected to be funny. I don't know, maybe it's just because I think of shit before it happens, so a lot of the shit I'm just like... To me... But that's what I mean, that you can think of it more and then if like, it happens, it can like still be funny. When you, you see a decision a character makes, and you can see, like, the rest of the movie exactly where it's going from that moment forward. Which brings me to About Time, which is actually, that did not happen in that movie. About Time where, wasn't really a comedy, though. No, but, like, I got... I, I won't say that I, like, got it wrong, but, like, I definitely didn't think that was where that movie was going. If that makes sense. Uh, like where it ended up. Okay. In what way? Uh, how it ended up basically being a, uh, like, a fatherly, father-son movie as opposed to a romance movie and how they didn't play the whole, you know, when he, like, goes and he sees... Uh, is it his daughter is now his son? Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck? And he's he going to undo it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way it's just kind of like changed back to how it was. Um, instead, I thought like that was going to be like, oh my God, like, I, I don't know what the fuck happened. I've like erased someone from history. And then like, I mean, if it stuck, like, it'd be real fucking dark. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of what I thought was about to happen. It wasn't a dark movie at all. <laughs> I know, but like... Right, cheery mm, movie just takes yeah. an instant turn to... I mean, it did end up being kind of dark, and then the fact that they kind of included the rule of, like, you can never see your father again. But, I mean, that's... The, I guess that's life. Yeah. When people die. But there's yeah. a lot of things in life that are, you know... Dark, so whatever. Hang on, I'm ready to score this movie. Yeah. I give this movie a 10. 10 not a oh, um, what are you giving it? I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Jonathan? I'm going to give it a 4. I'm going to give it a 2. Um, I would rather watch Tenant or Lost in Translation than watch this movie again. I think I'd watch Lost in Translation just because, like, I feel like I've I've watched this movie a lot. Where Lost in Translation was just, like, a beautiful movie. I'd rather watch War Dogs than this movie, and War Dogs really has nothing for me to go back to the well for. I wouldn't. I would not do that. Not our lowest ranked movie. Is Mouse Hunt still the lowest? No, War Dogs is the lowest. Yeah, War Dogs yeah. is the lowest. Because I didn't like it as much, probably. Even if I gave Mouse Hunt a 6, it still wouldn't be the lowest. What did I give it? Did I give it a 4? What? Mouse Hunt. Um, you gave Mouse Hunt, yeah, 4. Yeah, I, I think if I were to re-rate it, I'd probably give it a 3. If you gave Mouse Hunt a 3 and I gave it a 6, it would be tied for lowest with War Dogs. That's how much we didn't like War Dogs. <laughs> yeah, War Dogs is good. War Dogs yeah, is 633. I mean, to me, like, we kind of all agreed like it wasn't a great movie. Yeah, but you still gave War Dogs a 6. Because I felt like I still... Like, it's not like the movie was, to me, like, offensive. Like, to me, below a 5 has to be, like, offensively bad. I agree. War Dogs was offensively bad. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's fine for you, but it wasn't offensively bad to me. It was just. I've also given okay. the lowest score now. Hmm. I've given the lowest score now. What didn't I give a uh, uh, mouse on a two? Now you give it a three. No, John or Brendan changed it after the fact. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would never change your guys' scores. Uh, no, you give mouse on a three. You give War Dogs a three. I had also given War Dogs a three. We were previously tied for lowest score. Um, so next week will be Jonathan's pick. Jonathan, you have to give us a banger. Monty Python and Holy Grail to end comedy month. 
Monty Python. I also, I thought, like, you keep saying comedy month. I thought it was just a comedy cycle where we each picked one. Yeah, one of each. That's what I thought, but that's fine. But I mean, I'm like, I like Monty Python. So. Definitely, I'm... We, all, we all didn't like each other's comedy picks, so we got, yeah. I got to do I gotta do one that's like... I, Shaun of the Dead I, I did know, pretty I well, it. right? Actually, yeah, I Shaun of the like, Dead did fine. Hold on, I liked each of your uh, comedy picks. Yeah, you still give Shaun of the Dead a six, Jonathan. Yeah. But no, like it wasn't like it. No, I wouldn't call had a six banger. a like though. A nobody, six is nobody, like if, if you want to be accurate, I didn't like your guys' comedy picks. <laughs> but like Luke didn't give either of them. Luke gave Lego Movie high. a seven and Shaun of the Dead a seven. Yeah. Oh. He liked both of those movies. Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. I would I would consider seven a like, yeah. yeah. I would consider six like a I mean, you uh, you had already seen Shaun of the Dead and told me that you liked it, so it wasn't a surprise that you liked Shaun yeah. of the Dead. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't like it as much as the first time I watched it, though. No, and I think that's true of, like, every comedy movie, basically. But, uh, yeah, I mean, some... to be honest, any any comedy movie is worse as you continue to watch it. I don't know. Like, the quotable that. ones are fun to quote along with, but, like, it's not, like... You're not getting anything new out of the movie. Unless it's, like, packed with, like, clever jokes that you didn't notice the first time. It's rare that a comedy movie is better on subsequent watches, I think. I think, I think it, it could be it, just as good with, quote, with quotable ones. It's like, sure, but it, always, it doesn't always get a fun time. better. No, but it doesn't get any better. Like, other movies get better sometimes when you watch them. Yeah, like, I mean, a really good drama will just get better. Like, every time I watched Your Name after I watched it the first time, I liked it more and more. I've not watched it again and been like, I don't like this as much as I previously did. Um, And the same can be said for Pan's Labyrinth. And Luke's starting to pull away with the highest sum and average. Who had it before? I thought he always. No, had he it. always has it, but he, it, the gap is widening. Yeah. One twenty-seven, one nineteen, one fourteen. I just ain't got it in me to like hate often. Like. I mean, I don't have it in me to like hate. Off- I will never like think about this movie again, really. But if you want my like, opinion, I'm sure gonna give it. I didn't hate Lost in Translation, but I wasn't I wasn't happy about it, and I didn't like like it. So five out of ten. I wanted and, to like Lost in Translation. I just yeah, I didn't think too, there was enough there. Yeah. Not very good. And I mean, especially today, like I don't know. I feel like a lot of the like Xen I'm like really more xenophobic aware now, and a lot of the jokes were like culturally kind of fucked up but like the homophobia and misogyny in this movie was fine the difference is the characters are homophobic or misogynist but there's not like a representation of homophobia or misogyny in this movie in the same way like Will Ferrell with his wife are you saying that, like, the characters that were um, If there were actual misogyny in this movie, movie, there would be a uh, female character that was that's, like... I guess there's uh, Lendl Global, CEO, you might consider, but then, I mean, Urshan is basically that same character. Essentially just a greedy, like, thief. You know what I mean? But, like, to me, if if you're gonna have like a homophobic movie, like a a truly homophobic movie, there needs to be terrible gay representation, like, or lesbian, etc. There needs to be, like, the representation needs to be there and bad. I don't think that that is true at all. Mm, That's my thing. If a movie is, like, filled with propaganda about, like, these people being shitty and it's, that's just like not true. Is there is there propaganda in this? I mean, maybe I'm just not. There's a lot of toxic masculinity in this. There's there's definitely toxic masculinity, and they bring up, you know, femininity is like 
you know, obviously they're cops, but they bring up basically femininity as being bad, which is wrong. But I guess I guess characters. they're just missing. They're missing. Okay, but how is femininity? I, I will... Hold on. But none of the feminine the... characters are bad. They're all great. Which is what I'm trying to say. Like the worst, the most racist movie you can possibly have is one where, and you can have a differing opinion, where they hired a black actor to say some stereotypical black shit. I don't know if you heard the story where they basically, uh, shit, he's dead now. Who played, uh, Black Panther? Uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, so Chadwick Bo Boseman went on record, like, a couple years before he died, that he got accepted for a role in a movie, and it was, like, gonna be his breakout movie, but he read the script and he was like, fuck no, I'm not doing this. Because he found, like, the representation to be, like, sickening. Yeah. That, yeah, that happens a lot. But the, to me, like, you know that... The representation of women in this movie is not good. I don't know, you have Dr. Sheila Gamble. Intelligent, kind, giving. She does get shit on but herself is not a bad person in any way. You, you cannot talk any bad about her other than she puts up with someone who's an asshole. Right, but she doesn't, like, it's not like she does anything with that. She just exists to be shit on. I gotta... Mostly agree, but at the same time, she does not exist to, like paint also her being a doctor bad. isn't even a character choice it's just a further step of what a poll for will ferrell's wife yeah but i'm again my main thing is it did not like show like look at these people her whole existence is on. in contrast to him yeah i mean the movie's about these two individuals, basically. I don't think that she was a, a great character. Like, I see no, what I... argument you're making, but, like, it, I don't think that making her a doctor, like, does anything to make up for the fact that, like, she doesn't exist as a character, really. Yeah. Like, even though she is... You're yeah, supposed I mean, to see her as a great person and like too good for Will Ferrell. Yeah, I mean the movie is definitely not like a love that story. That doesn't. You know? It doesn't like make her. It doesn't make her represented at all. And that and that's the thing. Without him being an asshole, she's not even too good for him. I mean, she's hotter than him, obviously, but like he's a kind dude for the most part, other than with her. Hold on. My whole thing is it is not actively like negative in the same way. It absolutely is toward femininity. Do. do you think this movie is as bad as 16 Candles? I haven't seen 16 Candles. Because that is something I would consider actively like horrible. Like I'm not saying it's the worst, but that doesn't make it good at it. No, but I don't think every movie needs to be like social justice aimed to No, be but it can just be neutral and not shitty. That'd I mean, be to me again, the whole point is the characters are shitty. But Will Ferrell but... isn't shitty. Yeah, he is. He sucks. He's shitty in the one sucks. way. No, I think he sucks in multiple ways. What other way? What? He was literally a pimp. But he I don't wasn't think shitty when he was being a pimp. In fact, he was actually being... Really? Like, when he goes... He, he literally starts crawling back to who he was as, an, a, as a pimp, and he says, Gators, bitches, ain't better be wearing jimmies. Like, clearly that was something that he did say, so that he's not telling the whole truth when he says that, and it's made abundantly clear that that is the case. I think that's a discordant thing in the movie. Because the first half of the movie 
he seemingly doesn't even realize that he's a pimp. I think, I think that more, he's I just think saying like I wasn't a pimp. I no, I, he doesn't the understand. Jo- the joke is that he doesn't. He doesn't understand. There's no way to not. They definitely play both sides in the movie, which doesn't I make mean, sense. Literally by the end, he's like, "Yes, I was." A pimp. I know that's what I'm saying. They play both sides in the movie, and it doesn't make terms sense. Of who he was, people do this a lot uh, when they go through traumas. I'm not saying this movie's like it's totally right to the fact that this is how you know like people's brains work. I'm not saying that. But people do do that, where they're like, no, I never did that. And it's like, yeah, you fucking did, and you've admitted as, as much, like, years ago. And then at the end, he's come to terms with the fact that he's a piece of shit, in my opinion. They make it a, that's like a negative character growth. Just I don't think out. he's like, yes, I'm a piece of shit, and I have to, like, be bad. I think he realized that you know, he was who he was. I which I think, I think is, it was just the movie having its cake and eating it too. Yeah, maybe that too. But I don't think that makes the movie like trash just because of that. No, I'm just saying the, the pimp bit doesn't make sense because it's discordant with itself. Yeah, I mean, it is a comedy and I feel like that's pretty common. In no, internal movie. consistency can exist in a comedy. Hmm. I don't know. It it can, but it makes the movie worse. I don't think not that's true. Necessarily. Like Shaun of the Dead was not internally consistent. That was. In what way was it not internally consistent? Uh Sean is considered like, oh, he's he's lazy, blah 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 blah. By the end what what happens? She just kind of accepts him because oh well at least, you know, we lived. Like he's still a lazy bum. There's no reason for uh her to be with Sean. It's not consistent whatsoever. It's just wait. No, he also escape. changed. No, it's totally just the movie. Wait, no, no, he no. Not change. He it literally goes and plays video games because you. Yeah, yeah. Be, hold on, hold on. What? That's what you see. Does not make a difference. No, 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 no. At all. Will you? It's the movie having its cake and it's eating it too. That's what you see. But he also lists out their plans for the day and says, "I'm gonna pop out to the garden for a bit." And she's like, "Yeah, but he lists out his plans all the time, and he never did. No, no, no. He never went but through with it. the so fact that she's the f- never will you let me finish? The fact that she's acceptant of it, and that she begrudgingly is like, okay for a bit, shows that to me he has changed for her, and she's worried about him spiraling back that way. I think there's not any any little bit of inclination that there's been any change that happened at all." And in fact, the final scene is literally him moving around still like a zombie at the end. And I'm not saying it makes Shaun of the Dead like crap, but it definitely is internally inconsistent as well. But I I feel like for comedies, it's very hard not to do that. And to be honest, there was still, like, no reason for them to be together. I mean, going through an experience like that would would help with feeling closeness. Uh, a lot of times, people think, like, oh, we'll go through a challenging experience <laughs> together. And it's not... No, but if you uh, lost everyone else and it was the last vestige of your normal life, you might she, cling to that. To my understanding, still has a family. Who? Do you ever see her mother or her father? That's not evidence that she has a family. They could have just as easily died. Again, though, the whole thing is... We know for a fact that her friends that she lived with died. She only exists to be Sean's girlfriend. What does that have to do with internal consistency? Because that's one of your complaints with the other guys as well. Uh, she's at least used for growth with Sean. Is she? Because he never grows, in my opinion. We're just gonna fucking go in circles, and it's gonna be exhausting. I, I'm not even defending Sean that it's like a perfectly well-crafted movie. It's just this movie does things so Sean much Sean. wrong to a greater degree. I don't know. 
I bet you Shaun of the Dead has a lower... Uh, that means literally nothing score. to me. No, 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 critic score, but a higher uh, watch score. And I bet you... The oh, I, I guarantee other guys has a higher score. audience score. No, I disagree. I think it'll be reversed. But also, that literally means nothing. I'm I know, I'm just I'm just making an observation here, I bet. It's a meaningless observation though. What's your fucking point? Because I think you really just you're finding reasons to be like this why bad. I pretty you fucking clearly laid out why I didn't like the movie. You definitely crafted an uh, an argument. So, because I didn't like the movie that you liked, I was crafting an argument and deciding not to no, like it. No, I don't. And again, I think in reality, you probably would give this game or this game, this movie, like a four. That's what I. I that's what I would have given it before you made me rewatch it, and I liked it less. Yeah, but I totally do think. No, I just didn't like the movie. You already admitted that you have reviewed things higher simply because other people... One movie. Mm. Mouse on. That's all I'm saying. This is just you being a smug dick about something that, like, isn't even true. You can't countenance that I don't like this movie. It's, un saying, it's untenable listen, to you. I'm absolutely not saying... That yeah. is literally what you're saying. You literally just said, oh, I I, you, you already admitted that you gave a different score to a movie, so surely you just wanted to give this movie that I like a worse score. No, but you gave it a worse score than you otherwise would have. You no, I gave it the score. Change. This movie like... sucks shit. <laughs> I said that multiple times. This movie sucks shit. Do you think that yeah, too reflects reasons, that this movie sucks shit? Your reasons are literally present in uh, Shaun of the Dead as well. Some that of them, not all no, that, of them. That definitely is... We've talked about already. It's basically more... I gave this. so many reasons why I didn't like this movie. And you're, like, hyper-focused on two. I'm definitely hyper-focused on, like, four out of four. I gave so many. The callbacks. Both of them have callbacks. As far as beating a dead horse... Shaun of the Dead has scenes that last for long. The problem isn't that it has over. callbacks, it's that it has bad callbacks. I think Shaun of the Dead does not have specifically great callbacks. The fact that by the end of the movie, he is... Shaun of the Dead doesn't really call zombie. back that much. Mm, if anything, uh, it calls back to the Cornetto trilogy. Th this was the first one. Or, or Sorry, uh, the Cornetto trilogy calls back to this one. I, I get them mixed in my head, but I don't think Shaun of the Dead calls back inside itself that much. I don't know. And when There's it does, nothing. it's iterative. Like the, the street scene where everybody is alive and then they're dead. Hey, look, an iterative callback that changes the scope of the movie. I don't think it was necessarily iterative. You Do can't you, consider that iterative. It's the same thing. Everyone like basically becoming oh, zombies. Not alive. The, the whole point is they're showing you on TV like, oh, there's this infection happening and he's ignoring it. And then at the end, or not the end, but... By I'm talking about just the street the scene where he walks in the street. Yeah, but that's literally part of the street scene. When he's ignoring all the signs that the zombie apocalypse is basically happening. And then later, it is much further along, and he's still ignoring the scenes. It's not iterative, it's just further along. I'm just... The street scene, not him ignoring the signs. The street scene is... It's the same shot, changed. That is iteration. To, to propel a point, that's... That's iteration. Hmm. You understand what I, iteration I, means? I, you would do well to go back to where I said that is iteration, and you said no, because it's the same joke, just in a different way, and talking about something slightly different. The TLC joke is not iteration because it changes the song title. I don't know. It's the same joke, just with a different song title. I mean, that's what makes it good. That's what iterates on it, is the fact that it continues. It's not just like he keeps saying, you know, the same title. I think we've uh, walked in circles enough around this. Yeah.
I just I think that's about it. I'm just dying inside that I'm not allowed to have a different opinion than him. I definitely did not say that at any point. You basically you literally said I gave it a different score than You're what I agree. You are literally making bullshit I didn't up. Say, oh, you love this movie. You're a liar. I literally said like, yeah, you probably would have given this movie a three or four. You said four, and also had no evidence at all. And then when I said no, you said no. I, I gave the evidence of you literally gave Shaun of Dead a seven out of ten, despite having many of the same similar flaws, because comedy movies tend to have the same or similar flaws. But this movie is to a greater because degree in all what? of those flaws. No comedy ever is going to have like a really cohesive story, because the whole point of a comedy is the fact that the characters act in wild and wacky ways. You can still have a story. Shaun of the Dead still has a story. Hot Fuzz still absolutely has a story. Other guys still has a story. Absolutely does. But also, like, not having a story wasn't one of the complaints I made about this movie. Well, we weren't talking about the story. We were just talking about... But you just brought it up as a story. Thing, which isn't a thing that I brought up. I, I, did, I, I have noted that I prefer my comedies to have a story, but uh, you weren't in the call yet, but I said to Jonathan, this movie does have a story. Before we started recording, that is a thing that I said. It is never I mean, a point I, I brought care. up as a negative. I love the Big Lebowski. What do you mean you don't care? You, just, no you just brought that up as a thing that I detracted on this movie, which literally never happened. That is you whole cloth making something up. I didn't up. say anything about a story. I said... Oh my god, we have to end this recording because I'm going to lose my fucking mind. I didn't say you said it didn't have a story. You do, why did you bring up the story thing then? Where did that come from? I simply said every comedy story basically has similar problems. I don't know how many times we, I can we say must the same end. Thing we must because end. Because the characterization we must is stop going this. to be a little wild. And therefore it's not going to be as believable as, say, a drama where people are going to be acting in more of a, what's the right word, logical way? I, I'm done with this. I'm checked out. No more. This movie sucks. Apparently my score was a lie because Luke says so. Thanks for listening. Bye. It sounds so dude.